Hello, in this video I will quickly show you all uh, main Refire Warning features. This is new modifier in Refire 1.64 and it plays older Refire Fragmenter modifier and I will show you why. So the first feature it, uh, that it 20 times faster than Refire Fragmenter. So here is a simple cube and it has 4000 points. Uh, and uh, Refire Fragmenter usually takes about 100 seconds to fragment it. Uh, but Ray Five or I do it just needs about two, three, about two or three seconds to generate four thousand fragments for this cube. Next feature it that it support fragmentation of shelled objects. Again, here's the results using Fragmenter. As you can see, there's some weird geometry inside, and here's the Five or I. As you can see, it's pretty clean and no artifacts. Next feature is no smoothing artifacts. So here's again a refire fragmenter, and as you can see, sliced edges. There are some artifacts here and here. Uh, also, there's some weird geometry inside. And again, here's a refire fragmenter. The cylinder already pre-fragmented, and as you can see, no artifacts and no weird geometry. Next feature is support for box, cylindrical, and spherical point cloud. Here you can see point cloud gizmo helper, so you can move it, you can rotate it and scale. And when you have fragment on with interactive button on, you can see that whatever you move it, you get instant result. Also each of these rollouts has center abuse property, which allows you to move uh, points closer to the center. Next feature is radial point cloud. It's pretty simple. Another uh, rollout with properties, and it allows you to generate radial fragmentation types. Next feature is support for uh, geometry. Support for geometry, uh, particle sources, and shapes as point cloud generators. So all you need to do is just go to this. Uh, uh, objects, sub-object mode, and here you can see list with all the uh, properties. So you can pick any geometry. You can pick several uh, geometries, shapes. Here's another one, and particle sources, sources all at once. So if you will start fragment object, you'll see that all of them generate point cloud. So you can use simultaneously several geometries, shapes, and particle sources as point cloud generator. Next feature is custom point cloud. And using custom point cloud, this one you can use any of the previous point clouds together. So right now here's the box one. Uh, here I can position it some some place. Next I can click up into custom, then go to radio. Uh, let's say spherical one, move it here, right click, up to custom, go to the radial one, position it here, right click, up to custom, another one I will position here, right click, up to custom, and finally I can go to custom here, and here you will see that I have all the previous uh, point clouds. Also you can go to custom point sub-object mode, and in this mode you can select every point and manually Re reposition it as you want. You can select all of them, you can select just one and move them as you want. So in this way you can create any kinds of point clouds. Next feature is point cloud filtering. Using point cloud filtering you can uh, filter out some points. So here's my default uh, point cloud. It has pretty uniform point clouds. Uh, points, so uh, when you decrease it, so using points you can using uh, filters you can uh, uh, filter out some points using outside clipping gizmo point uh, filter. You can go to the uh, object mode here, clipping gizmo, and here you can see this, uh, there is uh, another gizmo helper. And moving it, you can define area which you want to use.
and also you can invert it so in this case you will use all points outside of, of the clipping gizmo and all the points inside will be ignored in the same way you can use noise generator to define the area which you want to use and play with properties like scale or roughness and again you can invert it also you can use a texture map to define area which you want to ignore in this case I use black and white texture with blur gray fire so again you can invert it in this case it will use only points which are inside uh, the black area okay next feature is gluing by noise uh, it uses the same point filters but instead of ignoring you can change here to glue so in this case it will use noise generator for glue all filtered points so right now you see that there is a one big red area glued into one big element and another orange area here and the rest of the area is fragmented to pieces also you can turn off this uh, vertex color preview so here how it looks by default but if you want to see uh, all the fragments uh, using uh, vertex colors you can turn off this vertex colors preview and again you can use not only noise for gluing you can also use texture map the same texture map so uh, now I am gluing whatever is inside this ray fire world and again I can invert it also I can glue by volume so let me show how to use this you can go to the radio so right now all the fragments is uh, separated but you can go to fragments and turn on glue by volume here and playing with this property you will start gluing the biggest fragments together so the lower the value the more fragments will be glued together starting from the biggest ones so here we can define how we can define areas which you want to glue together next feature is gluing by clipping gizmo and again it use this point filters rollout this way as you can see if I won't use it I have this column it's fully prefragmented fragments everywhere but if I will use outside clipping gizmo filter on in glue mode you'll see that there is a clipping gizmo again here's a small cube and again it defines area which I want to have separated to fragments and area which I want to glue so whatever is outside of this clipping gizmo is fragmented to one solid uh, element and again you can move this clipping gizmo and you'll see how it start how it uh, change to fragments also there is uh, explode to objects functionality so you can explode to fragments and here you can see one big element here, one here, and all the fragments at the center is separated. So in this way you can define, you can fragment object only where you want it to be fragmented and keep all the rest of the area unfragmented. Next feature is stretching. Thanks to stretching you can create uh, fragments which will look like splinters. fragment increase let's say four uh, five hundred and all you need to do is just play with increases one of this uh, axis spinner right now I will use Z so whenever you increase it you can see that now the fragments stretched over the axis and looks more like a splinters next features are properties like material ID map size and gap and scale properties so right now my uh, marine object is fragmented and usually you may want to use some specific material for interfaces so here's my multi object material it has uh, this gray color for mata you want and a, a green and uh, I mean sorry red and black checker for material ID 2 uh, so and this material applied to this marine so 
here I set material ID 2 for interfaces but I can't see them so I can use a scale property to scale all fragments down so it will be easier to see what's happening inside and so now you can see that interfaces have material ID 1 so if you will change it to 1 you will get the same gray material changing to 2 will apply material ID 2 and using map size you can uh, play with scale of mapping to get uh, the scale you want as you can see everything is real time uh, and again also you can create gaps between your fragments it actually refragment all objects so uh, it works a little bit different like it's the scale property so uh, this is all the features I want to show you and uh, thank you for watching and thank you for supporting the development. Uh, goodbye.